I recently had a call with some of the team at Audio Kinetic, Jock, Simon, and Simon, who are all excited to tell me about their new sample library collection called Strata. Strata is a new concept for sample libraries. It's distributed as a Reaper project where you can dig into any sound as a sub-project and easily create the perfect layers and variations for your interactive media or game project. Strata will be most interesting for the game sound designers because they had you in mind when they created this. Even if you don't work in game audio, this is an amazing learning opportunity to explore top tier sound effects and see how they're made. There are currently 22 collections available covering ambiences, aircraft, bullets, creature movements, explosions, robots, and more. You get access to source files, ready to use effects, and Reaper projects. There's even a free sample of Strata with 16 gigs of content so you can try it before buying Links to everything will be down in the description below. This is a paid promotion. They're paying to get this information out to you guys. And I know that you'll find this interesting. And now here's my conversation with some of the Strata team at Audio Kinetic. I'm in charge of product marketing. My role is head of product now. And as a founder, you, you wear the hats you need to wear. And the last three years has been uh, not dedicated, but we spent a lot of time on, on Strata. The concept of Strata was something that I always wanted, but never managed to realize because it appeared to be too complicated to do. But I think we've cracked the nut. So I am familiar with Wise. Okay. I've never used it myself. It's middleware. It t gets your, your sounds from, from the DAW into the, the game. Right, so yeah. Wise is kind of like a a thing that runs in the game engine, and yeah. it, it's and the software that connects everything together. And I know that you have a newer sort of app that translates things directly from the Reaper projects into the Wise projects. Exact, exact. Okay. That we that we've named Ria Wise. I think that's only maybe a year old. Is that right? Oh, no, not even. I think it's not even. in September, October last year. So uh, it's uh, maybe four months old. So it's good that you, you have already a certain understanding of WISE and where we fit in, in the landscape. And, and and since we released WISE back in 2006, the first version, the whole idea was to give in the hands of the sound designers as much control as we could uh, so that they can control <laughs> How long will be their fade in and fade out when you go from an environment to another or how much variation you want on your sound and, you know, things like that without having to rely on programmers or coding stuff. And because that that was the nature of the job back then. I mean, if you were not a programmer or <laughs> or had or if you were not lucky to have a strong team of programmers that appreciated what audio can bring you were um, in a sad position it was quite difficult to do stuff anyway so providing control was really important and strata is kind of using the same dna approach it's the same idea behind it is providing more control to sound designers on on their sound and let me show you a few slides so i'll present so that you, you get all the bits and pieces, and then Simon will show you in action directly in Reaper uh, how we structured things and so on. What is Strata? It's the first and only and sound effects library that has been designed to be used and distributed in its multi-track format. So typically when you purchase a sound effects library, you get the result, right? There's a sound designer that layered stuff and rendered the result, and that's what you license. Some collections will have construction kits, so you're going to have some of the stems, but basically you're downloading a zip file containing a series of WAV file, and you put that in your database and you search. And from there, you do your work. Where with Strata, we provide this, the rendered files, the final file, but we provide exactly how that sound has been created in its native format, hence in its Reaper format in this case. So we had to choose a, a DA, and for us choosing Reaper uh, was the obvious choice because we already have a large portion of our WISE users that are using Reaper, and it's so scriptable that there's good reasons for that, especially in video games when you deal with 
tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of files per game. Audio Kinetic is a software company at, at the heart of it. So having using a tool like Reaper that is highly scriptable, that opens a lot of opportunities. So that was a no-brainer for us. So the idea is, at terms, is to write Strata-specific extensions and scripts to speed up the workflow or make it it more creative, things like that. The first extension we created is this RIA Wise, so to facilitate the transfer from Reaper to Wise. And again, because it's, well, I don't need to convince you on Reaper, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think you know the value there. We built Strata as most libraries out there, so we it's it comes with a series of collections, and collections are attached to themes, um, like footsteps and weapons and this and that. So there's nothing different there. Where it's different, it's the way it's presented, though. So when you uh, open a, a given collection, so here I'm, I've got our historical firearm collection, and we have like old weapons in there. So you get you start with a main Reaper project, and that's where you preview your content, and we say, okay, I want to focus on the pistol thing, then you double click on the Reaper project and it opens its sub project. So okay. we decided to go with main and sub projects uh, for this. It's a good encapsulation uh, of things for us. And inside the sub project, that's where the magic starts. So if we go and we look in details in, in this pistol example, uh, first of all, what you see is on the vertical axis, you get your variations of that song. Because video game is all about random containers because you play the same sounds over and over again so you need diversity so we always make sure that we have at least six variations and depending on the type of sound it can go up to 18 variations like footsteps <laughs> it's 18 variations per type of surfaces and type of shoes and actions and that you need a lot and then on the vertical axis, we structured all the all our strata collections this way, where we have a series of stems. It's always structured the same. So the, the one on top is always yellow, and it's always the main aspect of the sound or, or the body of the sound. And then we've got more detailed layers. So in the case of, a, of this weapon, well, we have the mechanics of the weapon and then the transient and then punch and tail and so on. And the cinematic is always at the bottom. We always mute that track because that's the over the top type of rendering that you may use for your trailer, you know, or <laughs> in a world and then everything is <laughs> greater than nature. That's, that's when you unmute uh, this layer, for example. And on the right hand side, we leverage the, the marker and the region systems. And we've put the care into how we name things. Uh, so that it's later, it's quite easy when you export from Reaper to Wise or to Wise or to something else, right? You can Strata is independent from Wise. It's just we made it convenient to to build your structure in Wise, but you can use that with Unity and Unreal and FMUD and so on. Like a lot of library vendors nowadays, we adopted UCS Universal Category System for the naming convention. If you're using Ria Wise. That's our extension to transfer from uh, from Reaper to Wise. So first, we leverage the wildcard system of Reaper. And the way it works is we associate those wildcards to Wise container types. Because in Wise, what you're creating is hierarchies of containers. And those hierarchies will define the behaviors of those sounds at runtime. You create presets, you determine your behavior when you import that in Wise. If those structures already exist, do you want to replace? Do you want to abort? Do you want to just merge the content? That kind of thing. And at the bottom, you see so you see uh, how these sounds that you're exporting will uh, basically be created uh, in Wise. So we can see the sounds into a blend container, into a random container, and so on in the wise structure. So as long as you have your wise project open and you're connected, then you see exactly how it will be there before you click the transfer to wise button at the bottom. And that will export everything. And that window we just saw, was yeah. that a was that a Reaper script? It's a Rea wise extension and it's downloaded through Rea pack. Okay. Did we mention this one is is uh, is completely free of charge. It's downloadable by anybody, yeah, yeah. I believe. Correct? No, we yeah. haven't mentioned it, but Good point that yeah. you're, you're saying is, yeah, this is distributed. You just need to put your GitHub path into RIA pack and you get access to RIA wise. 
And this is something I'm presenting it in the context of Strata, but it's not even attached to Strata. We, we do have a lot of our users that are using Re -Y, uh, that are using Reaper NYs, and they were asking for that kind of extensions, or they were hoping for that eventually. They were not directly asking us necessarily, but uh, we knew that eventually we would tackle that. And when we started the Strata project, we said, okay, now I think the timing is just perfect. We need to come up with this extension and get the two work well together. We have designed strata in a way where it's easy to leverage reaper wildcard system in the way that we've named things and understanding the type of structures that you would want to build in wise there is some symbiosis between a strata library and the type of objects you're going to create in, in yeah. wise so this looks very familiar for me when you know um seeing breakdowns of sound effects in games or redesigns and things like that. This is how sound designers are already designing things. So this is going to look very familiar and people are going to get started with it very easily. That exactly. We didn't want to reinvent that portion of it. What we wanted to reinvent is the way we create and distribute uh, sound effects libraries using the same type of workflow and tools and what they're used to do already. And, and there's a big bias currently with Strata toward video game and interactive media by the type of collections that we decided to produce content. But even for a given collection, for example, a vehicle collection, if you do that for film, you're going to have a lot of pass by, like car passing by. In games, it's not what you need. In game, you need an interactive engine and you need to get the RPM of the vehicle from the game engine and, and the speed. And, and then you use the magic of WISE to build everything so that it's interactive and it makes sense. At the moment, and probably for the next few years, the content will be heavily biased toward interactive audio or mm. video game, and eventually extending that to linear uh, media. Because there's some linear moments in games as well, <laughs> when yeah. you need that there, and eventually to appeal even more to the post-production world. So I can see the collections being very useful for any sound designer, but they're primarily for the interactive. Design with that in mind, because, and this yeah. is something lacking in a lot of collections and libraries available out there. It's mostly been, well, there's a lot of those libraries that's been created for film or with linear in mind. So it's great for that. But when you need to take a sound and breaking it down in three or four components, because in your game, the player can use those components individually or they have interactions. Or let's say it's a weapon and there's different mods for the weapon yeah, exactly. that changes the sound and each exactly. component can be swapped out and having all those as separate sound files allows you to change them within the game a lot easier. And with exactly. a film, it is only happening once on screen, so you don't need it. endless exactly. variations, but you do need that in in games. Yeah, this is this is excellent. This is really cool. You nailed it. You, 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 <laughs> that's exactly the thing there. And modification, that's a, that's a good example. And typically, so in a film, you take all these tracks and you have the picture, so you mix it so that it fits to the picture, you render done. For game, typically, you'll probably render that sound in two or maybe three independent sounds. So you, you, you may mix some of the colors together and export that, but then the final mix is done in WISE with the help of the information you receive from the game. What is the distance yeah. from your listener? What is the velocity of the object? The angle with regards to the camera? You know, you take all this information and then you have a dynamic mix. And every frame and every time you shoot, it might change. If I understand correctly, WISE also has filters and reverb and... And yeah. volume adjustments, of course. Exactly. And that can all be dynamic and exactly. controlled by the game. Final mix usually isn't done within Reaper for a game. It, no, never, actually. Never, well, never. you can, but Not it's never, so... But... <laughs> For, for a certain type of sound, it's fine, probably, yeah. like a UI sound, you know, you navigate in a menu. Yeah. All right, the sound you export from Reaper is probably good enough and, and, and it works. But when you have more complex systems in place, like a vehicle and weapons and, and weather system. So nowadays, you know, open world, you get closer to certain area, the time of day is at night time and day, like your ambience is constantly changing. Typically, it's not just a loop and you're going from the day loop to the night loop. 
some people are still doing that, but it's getting more and more sophisticated and dynamic and, and alive. When you subscribe to Strata, you receive all the rendered files because we want people to put that in our database, uh, in Reaper database, uh, uh, media, or maybe in SoundMiner or other tools like that. So you get a quick preview, but then it's mostly just a bunch of Reaper projects. What was important for us is when you open those projects, you press play, it has to sound as intended, right? As like the sound designers created that thing. So we needed to provide plugins with Strata. We bundled three families of plugins. So the first one is the IEM bundle. So there's 16, 18 plugins in the in this bundle. So you might you may know IEM already, maybe not, but we use them mostly for the ambient collections um, because of what we can do with encoding the sound and virtualizing and so on. We took all the wise effect that are meant to run at runtime, and we ported these to VST3 so that they can be used in Reaper as well. Since our first partner in that, that adventure is Boom uh, Library, when we started discussing and agreed to start the creation of content with them, they were building Enrage plugin. I, have, you, have you seen Enrage before? No, I haven't. Okay. I, I don't know anything about it, actually. It's a, it's a fantastic plugin for sound designers. Simon have, has a good way to present it typically, but it's the Swiss it's, Army knife of sound design. Yes, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, a, it's an insanely flexible plugin. You, it has lots of different modules that you can determine your, how you're going to route through those different modules. So you're pretty much designing an effect plugin so you have filters, you have compressors, you have impulse reverb, you have modulation, uh, you have pitch shifting, uh, pretty much everything, and it's all very good. Within it, more or less produce any kind of plugin that you want to have, and you can control it as well <laughs> in a way that's very flexible. So e even if it's a very becomes a very complicated chain of effects, you can assign within it controllers that control yeah. different parameters mostly a generator or a filter a bit of both there's like 50 or 60 different components like distortion eq filters and so on and there's some wave generators as well and you just build you see that portion here those little square those are compressor distortion gain and so on so you build from this is the input and at the bottom is the output so you build your voice pipeline for that effect basically you can split the signal and have different processing on the left and right or mid side or then you recombine and it's one of those things that once you've started using it, it saves you having to have 10 other plugins installed. We're a software company, right? At, at the heart of it, we arrive with this idea of Strata and, and the format and how to, to do it. And it, it was literally in the same DNA than what we're doing with WISE. We're providing more control in the hands of the sound designers. And this time, not at the middleware level, but at the production level directly. So we wanted to approach the best providers out there. And the number one on my list was Boom Library because I knew them already and I knew that they deliver awesome quality. So I said, I will start with them. They would be the ideal partner. And the answer was, Simon, you're crazy, but we want to do that with you, so let's partner together. So, so, so we partnered together, and the deal was up to the release, we would stay exclusive to them. Uh, and we released Strata in October last year, so it's not even four months, or maybe four months now, um, that we released that. And But the idea since the beginning, and boom, was in form of that is that we wanted to bring other partners so what we want through strata is to get a collection of partners each have their own sounds and brand and signature and basically bring stuff interesting again we want the highest quality so we'll look for for these providers and and for providers that can complement what's already available in strata currently complement what's Boom is bringing, but that's where we're we're heading. The calendar we agreed on with Boom two three years ago when we started that was to create a first round of 37 collections. 
to produce. And we agreed on these collections. And we already defined at the time like how many sounds each of these collections will comprise because we were saying, okay, we need at least six variations per that type of sound. Other type of sound is 10 or 18. And, and when you start multiplying all the surfaces and all the impact and intensity, you just multiply <laughs> and it becomes bigger and bigger for some collections. And, and again, when we say a sound in Strata, what we mean by that is actually we mean a region, right? So a sound is multiple tracks combined together plus effects and so on. And you will render a sound with that if you want, but it's actually the number of regions. So if we look at the ambience fantasy with 303 sounds, it's 303 of these regions. It's quite huge in terms of volume. So just the free collection being 16 gigs, currently we have uh, we have these 19 collections available and we're at 300 gigs. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know how many gigs we'll have <laughs> when the 37s will be produced, plus the other partners that will be added later this year. So you kind of need to buy an external hard drive dedicated for that. Yes, eventually. That's nothing new as well. Sound designers typically have already multiple terabytes of content from partners and maybe maybe from their own recordings. So this is what is available now. And we are releasing new batch of collections every month. So later this month, we're going to have these three ambience collections release. Uh, in March, it's a the theme is sci-fi, so we got sci-fi weapons and doors and ambience. In April, it's magic and movement. In May, up to later this fall, we keep releasing uh, other collections. And when I talk with game developers and I put the focus here on the physics collection, typically there's a physical reaction <laughs> where, where they say, okay, 10,000 physics sounds, so 10,000 regions physics. So this is all the sounds with collision and frictions on this type of material against another type of material at low, medium, high intensity. So the matrix of sounds is crazy. And we've done it, the crazy work of <laughs> producing all that. And it started almost three years ago, and it will be released uh, <laughs> later this year. So so that's a lot of work uh, in itself, just there. So, uh, so yeah, so recap, it's sound effects library like you've seen before, but not like you've seen before in use. It's really the multi-track, full control. They're just Reaper projects, so you can customize them as you want. Um, by the way, the number of people that told us, I've learned so many tricks by just looking at the, the projects and the chains of effects and how things are layered together. And hearing that from junior sound designers, okay, it's almost you know, expected. But yeah. when you've got people with 30 years of experience saying, oh, I'm going to steal that trick with weapons that I just discovered, you said, wow, okay, this is, <laughs> the value is great, even for old timers with a lot of experience right. like that. Simon as well, many times said, wow, they've done with that collection, I've seen like crazy stuff going on <laughs> So in the past few years. So, so yeah, so you get your content or your collection in multi-track format. You get the, the the correct VST so that it matches the production. And again, you can use your own VST, right? If you want to go crazy with your stuff, you do. If you're using Wise and you're doing video game, well, there's Ria Wise that is there to help you. We are committed on these 37s collection, working on them right as we speak, but other partners will arrive, and there's a second round uh, in discussion with Boom as well. So the idea, what we want to keep is a steady pace of every month delivering new collection in this Strata format. So that's it for the slides. Any questions before we go into hands-on with Simon's presentation? With the collections coming from Boom, are they, are they building out these sessions, or is Simon doing that? They do the bulk of the work building the thing and then it's submitted to Simon and then there's some curation and, and so on and QA and back and forth. Uh, I'm the gatekeeper basically from working with lots of different designers at Boom. They're quite a big company and each collection has different types of dis different designers, different design approaches. So I'm looking to help 
One is to make sure that all of the collections are of a uniform quality and, are, and are also adhering to some sort of structure that makes it easy that every time you open a Strata sub-project, you understand the way it's structured because it's very similar. I imagine the Footsteps project file is still pretty intimidating with 10,000 variations. So it's broken down into uh, sub-projects that are um, service type and shoe type. So yeah. you have, okay. uh, you know, ladies' high heel, uh, sneaker, boot, uh, sure. things like this, and those surfaces. So it is structured to actually make it re realistic to be able to get to it and go, all right, I want to, I've got these surfaces in my game and these types of shoes, so I'm going to open these projects yeah and yeah. work on those and adapt them to my particular game and my character. And I guess if you zoom out and see everything mm. laid out with 10,000 yeah. regions in the project, that's intimidating. But if you use the region uh -huh. manager, yeah. you can just type in where you, where you want to find uh, and it'll And jump. it's separated. I think we uh, separated the collection that. in 76 okay. projects. It's 10,000 divided by 76 to a certain point. So, so okay. you see a, a few hundreds of sound, not thousands of sounds in Reaper. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, sure. All right. So let's look at uh, yeah, yeah. some of the weapon sound, maybe. And so this is the main project, and if I want to go to the M16, shall we say, I'll search, and it will take me to the M16. If I double click on it, I'm in the M16 project, and now I now I have the various layers that make. make up those sounds and those variations. So uh, if I want to mod do some sort of modification to it, uh, I decide that my game is much more bombastic. Uh, really loud uh, tech. A real kick-ass uh, thump to the, uh, every time I'm firing the weapon, I'm gonna turn up the punch sound. So I probably overdid it. I'm going to do a quick a save as, and I'm going to call my project demo. Why not? So that's a question that people ask a lot of times. So when I start opening a project, what should I do so that I don't want to destroy the work that's been done? So save as something else, and then go crazy with that thing, right? You. And if really you screwed up the original project, you can always re-download the content from us. So okay. in that time, what I basically did was I uh, I modified that and saved that project with the gun now sounding like this. And I rendered out all of these, all of these regions. Because Boom Library is creating the, these uh, collections, are these like brand new libraries that they're creating for this? And do they have to record, re-record things? Because, you know, for a, a straight-up one-shot library, they don't tend to have all of the variations available. And, you yeah, know, just kind of curious about how that part of it works. They have re-recorded some things, and some things they're drawing from their existing libraries. And a collection may not necessarily just pull from one boom library it might be okay well we've got some things from a gun library we've got some sound like if i look and show you uh i've got sounds that are from a from gun recordings uh so this is a, an m16 assault rifle and it's a certain perspective of the microphone and it sounds like that but others would be um might be might be something entirely different like the trigger sound might be a click from in fact from some other this, device in, yeah. some other device yes yeah. i mean and, and from a different boom library and i can see that there's pitch shifting on that and, and things as well oh yes oh yes there's a i mean pretty much every track has some form of processing going on for example this one's got a high pass a compressor distortion and gain 
on that track. And if you look, you know, this one, we've got high pass, we've got uh, a punch generator. Interesting, it's uh, basically generating some low frequency, uh, and in, which is being controlled by a gate, and then it's being distorted and then through a compressor, and then limited, and then EQ'd, and then some more distortion. Of course, there's a lot of recording they reuse because they, they had these assets, right? So they, they've put it there. Uh, some collections are totally brand new, like the footsteps and the physics. And there's a few like that that they started from scratch, which is great because we have like consistency sonically uh, with these things, and that doesn't exist uh, as a boom offering. And for some collection like UI, for example, and so on, they reuse their content, but they ended up having to complete the collection because we were kind of dictating what we want to see in terms of variation type of sounds and so on so sometimes they had to generate new stuff and while they were doing that they say oh let's say cons let's just re-record everything <laughs> but for some collection it's mostly reusing their content but they had to reauthor everything by exposing that thing in reaper uh by expo and telling them that Everything they do, we need to see it. Like, I don't want them to render stuff in the background. Maybe they can denoise thing. With, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but but if there's an artistic DSP effect that is put there, it has to show. It has to be there so people can play with it and making it more blue or yellow or, you know. So, um, so that made them redesign all their sounds. So, and even there's a company that, a game developer that told us, oh, we purchased Strata, we were really anxious in reverse engineering the effect chain. <laughs> and they realized that it, the boom version of a sound versus the Strata one is not sounding exactly the same. And it's obvious, right? They, they might have produced something 10 years ago uh, sure. with certain effects, they redo it today. And the beauty of that is when you do something that is fixed in time forever, like their their collection, you put everything to eleven, right? It has to be bomb, like fantastic and bombastic and all that. Where here, you put it to eight, you know, <laughs> and then yeah. you, you let the people push it to eleven or down to five, depending on their needs and the context of their usage. So that kind of liberate them of the pressure of having this only way of presenting every sound, and it has to be over the top and perfect for for people. And an example of that might be like the if the the player and another player have the exact same weapon but maybe they're at different distances or the enemy weapon is a little weaker sounding than yours and maybe unless they're like 10 levels yes. above you and then they've got a power more That's powerful a different sounding. story or is is the player aiming at you or is aiming elsewhere and and there's yeah. a lot of that that happens in wise actually where yes. you'll have those rules and whys so that you always drive the player's attention toward what's dangerous and what's important uh, for them to perform well, right? So, uh, so it's not something that you normally think about if you're used to designing sound for a video. Oh, but totally. For yeah. games, it's a different it's, mindset. You, you yeah. need to have all these different variations and the ability to change things within the game. It is, exactly. And that's where our call ended. I explored the free sample a bit and it's very cool stuff. So if you're interested in trying out and exploring Strata, there will be a link in the description as well, installation tutorial and overview kind of walkthrough from Chase. It's very likely I'll do more content on Strata in the future, probably as a live stream. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much to Adu Kinetic for sharing Strata with us. And uh, thanks to you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.